To run MATLAB, you've got two options. One, you can use an installed version, or two, you can use an online version. Option one, the installed version, requires that you get a license, download a copy of the MATLAB installation package, and install it on your computer. All that will take a bit of time and effort, of course, but if you're lucky enough to already have MATLAB on your computer, as I do, you're in great shape because you don't have to download or install anything. You can get started immediately. If, on the other hand, you do not already have MATLAB on your computer and you don't have a license for the installed version, you're still lucky and you are still in great shape because with option two, the online version, you never have to download or install anything. And the best part is that the nice people at MathWorks have decided that just for enrolling in this course, they're going to give you a free 12-week license to use the online version of MATLAB, which is called, well, it's called MATLAB Online. And it's really pretty slick. To use it, all you need is a web browser, and you can use it on any computer, anywhere, anytime, as often as you want to. The two versions look a bit different, but they both give you the same MATLAB language. There's some functionality missing in MATLAB Online, but everything you need for this course is right there. Now, before we get to MATLAB Online, and before we start doing actual exercises in MATLAB, we're going to introduce Installed MATLAB, because that's the version you'll see me using throughout most of this course. In fact, when we recorded most of these lectures in late 2014 and early 2015, MATLAB Online wasn't even available. Now I'm coming to you from March 2016, and MATLAB Online is very much available. So first you're going to see us introduce the installed MATLAB version, which was the only version available when the rest of this video was recorded. And then in the next video, I'll explain MATLAB Online and compare it to the installed version. If you're using the installed version, then after this video is over, you can skip the next one. But if you're using the online version, you'll need to watch both of them. So now, let's return to those dreamy days in the fall of 2014 when I was just beginning to talk about how to start the install version. You should be able to find a MATLAB icon somewhere to click or double click. For example, it might be on your Start menu in Windows or your Launch Pad on a MacBook or on its dock or it might be on your desktop, as in this case. As a matter of fact, there are three icons on this MacBook desktop, one for each of three versions of MATLAB that have been installed on this computer. You can see over here R2014B, R2014A, and R2012B. We double-click any one of them, say R2014B, then MATLAB starts up and the MATLAB programming environment window opens up. This window is also called a desktop. It's MATLAB's desktop, and we'll be doing a lot of work on it. The generic name for desktop is graphical user interface, or using the initials as most programmers do, we can call it a GUI, spelled G-U-I. Like any decent GUI, we can move it around. Let's see here, there you go. Now we can change its shape and size by dragging the edges of the corners, playing around that way. I'm going to um, put it right where I like it. There, I'm using up the whole screen that way. So I've got as much space as I possibly can get. Inside this GUI, we see three sub windows the current folder over here on the left, the command window in the middle and the workspace. When I click in them, their label at the top lights up, meaning that I've made them the active window. This arrangement with the current folder on the left and the workspace window on the right is the default layout for R2014A and B. The default is somewhat different for earlier versions, which you might have. Um, a lot of these will include a fourth window called the Command History window. It'll probably be over at the bottom right or the bottom left. You can have that fourth window in the R2014 A and B and later versions too. You just have to add it to the default layout. We'll show you how to do that in a little bit. 
Also, the Windows default can be a bit different from the version for the Apple operating system. These differences are small enough, though, that they're unlikely to cause you any trouble, so we'll just use one version in this course, 2014B, which we're looking at right now. That's the latest version available as we're recording these lessons, which, if you can see up here, is in the late fall of 2014. Well, let's look at the current folder over here on the left. This is the place where MATLAB saves programs into files, and it's also the first place that it'll look when it's looking for files that hold programs that it needs. We can change the current folder to be another folder. We can, for example, move up into the enclosing folder, which is called the parent, by clicking here on this tiny little folder icon. It's got a little black arrow pointing up on it. Or we can go into a folder that's in the current folder, MATLAB, by clicking on that. If you'd rather navigate using your operating system's folder explorer, you can get to that by clicking this little icon here with the little green arrow pointing down. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to navigate to a folder where I'm storing files for this course. Let's see. I'm over here in Tutorials. So I click Open, and now you see I'm in a different directory here. Folder and directory are synonymous names for the same thing. And over here, right up here, MATLAB provides an address bar, shows you the current folder, which is right here, its parent, its grandparent, and so forth. You can move to any of these folders by clicking them. You can't go back down unless you come over here and click. And way over here at the far right, you see this little teeny triangle? You can click on that and you can see recent places you've been. Uh, you'll notice we were here at one point, but I want to be here, so I'm going to click there. So that puts me back in the Tutorials folder, as you can see here. And since this is Lesson 1, I want to go to Lesson 1, so I'm going to double-click that one. And now we're in the folder called Lesson 1, which is a child of the parent Tutorials. Okay, now we know how to move around. We're finally ready to type our first MATLAB command. To do that, we first click somewhere in the command window. If we click anywhere in the command window, we'll see a little vertical bar that starts blinking on and off just to the right of this pair of greater than signs here. That pair of greater than signs is MATLAB's prompt. And what's a prompt? Well, let's look it up in the textbook. There, we click on Glossary, and we see the first definition in the Glossary. That's Abstract Class. That's uh, an advanced concept that comes toward the end of this book, where we introduce the object-oriented programming constructs in MATLAB. Object-oriented programming is one of those advanced concepts that we mentioned that are beyond the scope of this course. So let's type Prompt, which is what we're looking for, into this little search window here, and then we'll click on Prompt, and there's our definition. Prompt is a symbol or symbols printed by a program. MATLAB is an example to indicate that it's ready for input from the user of the program. MATLAB uses the prompt greater than, greater than. And I want you to notice something. If we go down here, we can click here to find out where this term was introduced in the textbook. And there it is, and we see that it's right there where the command window is first introduced. Almost any textbook that talks about the command window is going to start off by talking about this prompt. And that's what we do in the textbook, and that's what we do in the course. So let's get back to MATLAB. Before we type our first command, right here, you should know that if you ever need to regain control from MATLAB because it's taking too long to process a command, you can type control C. That's done by holding down the control key, which may just have CTRL written on it. And while you hold that key down, hit the C key. There. I did it, but nothing much happened other than going to a new line. But I can tell you 
And when you've made a mistake that causes MATLAB to pour out millions of numbers on the screen and it seems to be going on forever, well, like this. Let's suppose I type uh, RAND. We'll explain RAND later. 1E7. We'll explain that later. And I hit return, and oh my goodness, so numbers are just pouring out. Seems to be going on forever. And so I'm going to stop this nonsense with Control C. There, I hit Control C and stop MATLAB. Control C is the all powerful command that MATLAB obeys. Also, if you need to close MATLAB down completely, you can type quit like this. I'm not going to type quit, so I'm going to hit some deletes here and get rid of it. Or you can simply close MATLAB's window by clicking in the X up here. It's on the left in the Apple operating system. It's over on the right in the Windows operating system. But this is no time to quit. Okay, the time has come for our first command. I'm going to clear this screen using CLC and I'm ready to type a command. So get ready. This is it. I'm going to type X equals 1 plus 2. And now I'm going to hit the Enter key. Here we go. There. Well, maybe I built that up a little bit too much. But more is going on here than meets the eye. What MATLAB has done is create a variable given it the name X, calculated 1 plus 2 and gotten the value 3, stored the 3 in X, and printed X's brand new value in the command window for you to look at. Every programming language provides variables and manages locations in the computer memory to store their values. In fact, the definition of a variable in computer programming is simply a location in memory that has a name and a value. Or here's a little fancier definition from the glossary. A named location in memory into which values can be stored. Computer science definition as opposed to mathematics definition. The mathematics definition is a little bit different. But we're not interested in that here. We're interested in computer science definitions. And let's look at another one. We've just given this variable a value with an assignment statement. It's defined in computer science uh, like this. A statement of the form variable equals expression. That means assign the value of the expression on the right side of the equal sign to the variable that's on the left side. It kind of goes from right to left. The form of an assignment statement in MATLAB, and in almost all computer languages for that matter, is the same as it has been from the beginning in Fortran. You type its name, then the equal sign, then an expression. And once the variable is assigned a value, like 3 in this case, it'll keep that value until you change it. Okay, let's get back to the command window again. When we told MATLAB to assign 3 to X, X didn't exist. That's no problem. MATLAB created it right on the spot. You don't have to worry about creating variables, and that's one of the things that makes MATLAB simple to use. And one of the reasons Moeller's students preferred it to Fortran, I'm pretty sure. Fortran likes C, C++, Java, and many so-called compiled languages require a lot of setup work to create a variable. But the sort of programs that are typically written with these other languages, there are good reasons for requiring a lot of setup work. But it's a lot easier to get a program written if you can get along without it. And with MATLAB, we can. Okay, now let's just type our variable's name without assigning anything to it. We type X and hit Enter. This time, MATLAB tells us the value of X. That's all it does. Not so helpful now, we just saw it. But very helpful if you've given 50 commands since you assigned a value to X and you don't know what that value is now. Again, there's a bit more going on that might be obvious here. MATLAB has just searched its memory for the variable named x, found it, checked its value, discovered that it's 3, and then printed the 3 in the command window. Now let's ask it to look for y. y, enter. Oops, red type is never a good thing in MATLAB. You know, I've been programming MATLAB for 20 years and I still get a little sting when I see one of these red error messages. Anyway, MATLAB is telling us that Y doesn't exist. It says undefined function or variable Y. 
it says function or variable because functions can have names like y or x too. MATLAB thought maybe we were trying to run a function here. A function is simply an operation that's invoked by giving its name. You can look it up in the glossary. There's no operation named y, and there's no variable named y either, so MATLAB complained. Not sure why MATLAB mentions function before variable. Maybe it's because it's alphabetical. Oh, and by the way, let's clear up any confusion between the word command and the word function. They mean the same thing in MATLAB. Its documentation doesn't distinguish between these two synonyms, but it seems to use the word function more often than command. Okay, the function y doesn't exist, but here's an example of a function that does exist. Clear. Why don't you look over here at the workspace and notice that x shows up in the workspace and its value is 3. I hit enter and it's gone. In MATLAB, the word workspace simply means the set of variables that we've created. We just got rid of all our variables. We just had one. So the workspace is now empty. Let's put x back there again, this time with a different value. There, we can see x, and its value is 7,000. Let's look at x over here in the command window, and yep, it's 7,000. And notice that um, checking x's value doesn't change anything in the workspace. Let's try looking for y. Mm, we knew it would be an error. And making an error doesn't change anything either. Let's do something that does change the workspace. Let's set y equal x plus, I don't know, 5. So y is 7,005. And let's let zebra equal um, y minus x. You've got to add variables or change their values or delete variables to change the workspace. You can delete them by clicking the right button here on the um, thing you want to delete. Let's delete zebra. It's gone now. And if you don't believe it, there. But let's do zebra again. I can repeat that command by just hitting the up arrow key on my keyboard until I get to that command, then hit return, and there it goes. So I've given that command again, and zebra is back. And we can clear it with the clear command. This time we give it the name zebra, and it just clears zebra. It leaves everything else there. Note that zebra is pink. See here? Or is that purple? MATLAB uses purplish pink to mean that the name zebra is being given to the command clear instead of the value 5, which the variable zebra had. Clear is not removing the 5 from the variable zebra. It's removing the variable named zebra from the workspace. And its value is lost with it, of course. If that's confusing, forget it. The reason for the color is not that important. I just thought you might want to know that your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. Okay, we've looked at the three windows in the desktop and the address bar above them. But there's also all that gray stuff above that, up here. This is where you find the so-called tool strips. And the most important one is the one on top, by default. It's called the Home Tool Strip, and here's its name. You can get to the other two by clicking them like this. But we'll focus on the Home Strip in this course. We'll look at many of the tools on this strip later, but we'll postpone that until a couple lessons from now. You can hide these tool strips, if you want to, by clicking this little tiny triangle with the line above it, over here on the right. When you do that, the blue bar remains, but the tool strips disappear, and the windows down here get bigger. That's useful when you're working on a small screen, but since we have a big one, we're going to click that triangle again and get them back. You probably noticed the little white area just to the left of the triangle that we clicked. This is the search bar. And it works like the typical search bar. You can click in that area, type words into it, hit enter, and if MATLAB has the information about the words you typed, it'll pop that information up. For example, if we wanted to know about the clear command, we might type clear command in here. Let's do that. And hit return and a window pops up with the search results. You can click on clear to see what the command does. We'll do that. You can see that there's more than one way to call clear. And there's examples over here. You can click on these little links and it'll show you examples. In the meantime, though, 
Uh, let's talk about command history. Uh, you remember I mentioned that to you before. You can type command history in here if you want to see what it does. And there's command history and there's information there. But I'm going to talk to you about it and tell you how to do it. Um, I told you you can get the command history window to show up if you want to. Well, here's how to do it. Click anywhere in the command window. Then click the up arrow on your keyboard. There. You'll remember I did this earlier to redo a zebra assignment. When you do that, you see a list of previous commands that you've issued. These little red marks by these commands show that there was an error on those commands. Now, if you want to repeat a command, you just up air your way to it. Um, let's say I want to repeat um, y equals x plus 5. There, I hit enter and I repeated the command. It didn't accomplish much because y is still 7005, but I did show you how to repeat a command. Well, what if you want to repeat a previous command but change it a bit? Say change x equals 1 plus 2 to x equals 3 plus 2. Well, let's just hit the up arrow, and let's hit it until we get to the command we want to change. There. What we're going to do is arrow over and change the 1 to a 3. Hit Enter. And we see x equals 3 plus 2, and x equals 5. This is very useful when you have a long command that you want to alter slightly. Finally, if you want the command history to show up in a window on the desktop, as is the default in the older versions of MATLAB, just click the up arrow on the keyboard now, and then go up here with a mouse and click this little tiny down arrow. Come down here and click Dock, and there's the command history window right there. You can scroll up and down, and you can click on commands and execute them over here in the command window. I think I'll leave it there for a while for old time's sake. Oh, and note that when we hit the up arrow, we put the x equals 3 plus 2 command in the command window. Well, I don't need to do that command again. It wouldn't hurt. But I'll show you that you can delete it without executing it. Let's just click left, sweep over it to highlight it, and hit delete. It's gone. That can be important to know if you accidentally put a long command there that shouldn't be re-executed.